Crystal Evans, welcome to Actors Fairs. How you doing? Grand. How are you doing? I'm good. What, how did it feel to get killed off in such an awesome show? Well, let me tell you. I mean, I've always wanted to die on a show, um, and it, I couldn't have asked for a better way to go out. Um, are you ever going to be able to iron the same way again? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. <laughs> best friend literally uh after it aired she put up a story of her like throwing away her iron <laughs> oh i think i saw you repost that <laughs> that's amazing canceled no no more irons well for those listening we're talking about her awesome performance in high town but before we get to high town let's start about the beginning so you grew up in boston i did i grew up in western massachusetts uh which is like 20 minutes outside of boston um and when I was seven, my best friend like dragged me to a theater camp and I really didn't want to go. Uh, and then I ended up loving it and she ended up hating it. <laughs> and I just stuck with it. Uh, I grew up doing community theater. Um, I was in a girl group. <laughs> like Sick. Authority of my childhood called Girl Authority. Like uh, an in sync style? It was uh, more kids bob. Than oh. Um, it was nine girls, kind of spice girly, where we all had like different personalities. What one um, were you? I was country girl. So I got to sing all the country music. Weird. It, from Boston? How did that happen? I ridden a horse. No, nothing. Like, I guess I grew up on country music. My dad listened to a lot of country. So I thought that like I could sing all of it. Um, but yeah, it was crazy. It was super fun. We opened for like the Jonas Brothers and Jesse McCartney. Like, oh, you guys actually had like momentum. Yeah, we like toured nationally. It was we had two national like albums that were sold. <laughs> was, so you had a record deal. Yeah, with Rounder Records. Holy shit! Elaborate on that. I, you made it sound like this was like a casual, like <laughs> towny. <laughs> it 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 fully was like at my eleven year old self. I thought I was Hannah Montana, but. I was not like <laughs> it was nine girls. We were doing covered music. It was super fun. I'm so grateful for it. Um, and that's where I learned to like love performing. Um, so. Is this like in the arena days of Joe Bros? No, uh, like right before. Like got it. Before they like completely blew up. Were you crushing on them? Was that weird? Oh my god! I think when I met Joe Jonas, I literally forgot my name. I was like 13, had braces, like couldn't form a sentence that's hilarious i know joe a little bit he's a good guy <laughs> but then so then talk to me about that because like that obviously like with the jonas brothers like disney nickelodeon did you have anyone it was apparently i don't really remember because i was younger but um there we had like a deal with i think it was either nickelodeon i think it was nickelodeon and then the writer strike happened and then it kind of just all went down from hill from there oh you um, guys were gonna do a show think so that was like the plan but then it was like we had there were nine of us and that's a whole lot of girls yeah and they're figuring that out um but yeah it was it, I'm really grateful for it uh and then we all started to get kind of old <laughs> and then it just got like low-key creepy <laughs> and we were like I don't want to be a part of this anymore I'm like in high school thinking about college like I don't think I can really keep this going are you guys still all in touch completely like they're like my sisters like we totally grew up together um it they're what they're those people like you know you um you don't see somebody for like years but then you see them and it's like no time has passed yeah totally yeah, they're like that are um, any of them still pursuing it yeah a couple of them are still kind of in the in the biz um two of us went to school for theater me and carly uh carly grayson and i think every i don't think anybody else went to school for theater um she's still she's still doing it one of her girls is like a weather, a weather woman. She's like doing the weather on the news channel. Yeah. Love like that. Um, one of the girls works for iHeartRadio. So okay. Kind of stay in the entertainment business. Got it. Yeah. So talk to me about your past. So this band breaks up. You're in high school, and then. And then I start doing the high school theater, um, and I remembered how much I love acting. Like Chris Evans did the same thing, right? They're all, their family's there. Yeah, so Chris yeah. Evans, actually, a bunch of girls from Girl Authority went to high school with Chris. Right, because his brother Scott, they all did it, right? He did yeah. It. He lives, like, his, I think, I don't know if his house is in Sudbury, but, like, there, it's, like, 
15 minutes away from me. Oh, wow. So, okay. Yeah. And I always tell people we're cousins, but we're fully not <laughs> just because we okay. have the same one. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, Chris and Crystal Evans, you know? Yeah. Uh, oh, I get it now. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it took me a second. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to have to edit that. Oh, God, great joke. <laughs> I totally get um, the joke. That's so I, I started the school theater, and then I realized I wanted to just pursue it. So then I applied to a bunch of schools. I applied to NYU Early Decision, and I got in, and that was, like, the dream. Oh, that was your dream. I. It's so funny. I was, like, looking back at, like, my Twitter recently, and in, I think it was middle school, I tweeted, like, I want to go to NYU for acting. And That's then it. it's manifesting and telling you it works. That's so amazing because it, it's just funny. Like, I'll just bring this up. It's like, my dream schools were shittier schools than NYU, and NYU was my safety school. So it's so weird how that happened. <laughs> what, were, what were your dream schools? It was UCLA and USC, and I got into both. And yeah. but then I just decided I was like playing it safe, so I went to uh, to NYU like at the last minute. But we both went to similar tracks. So talk to me about your experience at NYU. What studio were you at? So I was in ETW, which is the experimental. Ooh, movie. I was at. So <laughs> I. <laughs> Sorry, ETW people watching. <laughs> Out of my comfort zone, like could not be more uncomfortable with everything that was happening for people that don't know the experimental theater wing well nyu doesn't let you choose where you're going yeah. to place for the first two years of your training primary That's studio is what they call it yeah in the studio that you're you have to stay there for the first two years um and so the experimental theater wing i did not get a piece of text for the entire first semester so I was not. Oh, like, you were like being the color red or being the color blue. Voice work, breathing work, movement work. And like, I am so grateful for it. I definitely learned so much, but oh my God, I was like, am I acting? Like, I, I don't know yeah. how to act. Like, I don't know what's, if a scene gets put down in front of me, I'm like, I, I don't know. Well, they don't, they don't even really position themselves quite as like, I, I think it takes like a year for you to even understand how it's applicable, you well, know? And that, that's just me being honest. I have some great people that have come through there. My cousin Bailey Nisetta, who's directed plays, went there. And so there's, I know there's a lot of good people. I don't want to be negative about no, it. But. Honestly, I'm so, so grateful for my time at ETW. So after the first semester, I was like, what in the heck? Like, yeah. I, I don't know why I'm here. I don't understand. Um, and I was like, I have to stick it out. And once it hit second semester and we started working on scenes, I worked with Terry Nickerbox. Second, first year or second, second year? Second, first year. Okay. So it was just one half of a year that I was like, what the heck? And then we started getting scenes and I started working with Terry Knickerbocker. He was on the show. He's great. I like adore Terry Knickerbocker. Um, he was somebody who like completely changed my whole view of like NYU and ETW. Um, and I kind of, I was so like hesitant about everything that they were presenting me. Like we did Grotowski and I was like, I, I hate this. Like I, yeah. <laughs> like, there's this thing called the cat and you like throw your body and like release sound. And I was like, I don't understand how this is helping me. Yeah. And Terry sat me down one day and he was like, you are here. So you have to make the most of it. And I was like, you're All right. right. You're so right. So the second I like let go of that, like, I don't know, like that. That's the of, only way that kind of work, like, you know, like animal work, like the only way you get something out of it is if you really just, I feel like in some fucked up way, you know how like people at church, like do the tongues talking. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's, it's, it's the same thing where you just got to yeah. buy the bullshit Come and be like, yeah. Drink the Kool-Aid, like just completely buy into it like say fuck it and just like let yourself go and that's when like things completely changed around for me um and then my second year was awesome we got a lot more like text and I felt like much more of an actor yeah um, and after that I decided to go to Stone Street um which is the on-camera acting studio yeah um, at NYU and there I just met like the most amazing people. I went for like a summer program and I met my manager, Michal Zecker, who is just the absolute best, who we both know. Yeah. 
and Ted Slaberski, who is like my everything. He is just the best. And Vance Barber, who is one of like Bob Krakauer's um, like disciples, I guess. Yeah, totally. And he, they completely changed my life. Um, and I realized like, I really, really wanted to focus on film and TV. So and, then did you go back in the fall to Stone Street again? Yeah, so I did a summer program. I did the summer program right after my sophomore year. Um, and then I studied abroad in London for a semester. And oh. I wasn't in the theater. It was just an academic semester. Um, and while I was there, I realized, like, I I miss acting. Like, I yeah. just felt like void. And so I actually was taking, like, a theater class where we would go and see a show once um, once a week. And I talked to my teacher and she was like, I actually have someone you can work with while you're here. So I just would like work on monologues with her like once a week and kind of just keep that muscle going. Um, so that when I got back, I didn't feel like I was like thrown into the deep end. Yeah. Um, but then I went back to Stone Street after that. And how was that? It was great. I guess. So that was, I don't know when you were there, did they do like first semester, second semester? Yes. Yes. First semester was all like intro yeah. class. Other Second students. semester, they give you a project or some kind of, yeah, yeah. I did a pro project with um, Ashlyn Halfnight, and it was super fun. Um, it was great. And then now I think they do a third semester or, like, you can keep going. Yeah. I don't do the project thing anymore. But then my third semester was actually, I graduated a semester early. So that was my first semester of my senior year. And it was my last semester at NYU. And I did an internship at um, CBS Casting. Oh, nice. Where Mahal worked. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, she worked. She actually got me the internship. Amazing. So she, we, yeah. So I got the internship and I, that was like my studio credit technically. And then I did like two classes at Stone Street and those two classes were Ted and Vance. Oh, uh, Ted's <laughs> the best. Yeah. The best. Uh, and yeah. And then I graduated and me and Michal started working together like right after I graduated we were freelancing and she just started sending me out on auditions and, did I had, you, like, and it was wild did you sign with an agent while you're at Stone Street or no no so yeah. I'm so Michal was my teacher at Stone Street that first summer yeah and she had she had, was just starting to become a manager and I emailed her at the end of the summer and I was like will you be my manager please I love you like <laughs> please you're so yeah. awesome she was like, I'd love to, but it's a conflict of interest because I'm like still your teacher. Yeah. But you're still in school. So like, even if I send you an audition, like you can't really do film. it. Yeah. I was like, okay, you're right. And she was like, but let's stay in touch. Like, I'd love to like know what you're up to. And we totally just stayed in touch. And the rest is history. That's amazing. And then talk to me when you were coming out, you know, because a lot of people then they have to like struggle for rep. You Having like someone that you kind of, even were freelancing with that you weren't signed with, like what things did you find yourself going up for? Yeah, it was wild because so many of my friends were still in school because I graduated a semester early. So I was in full pilot season mode. Um, oh, because you were done by January. Yeah, so I was in full pilot season mode, even though I was freelancing with Michal and I really recognized like how grateful and lucky I was because that's not normal. Like that. Yeah so not normal for someone to get like representation like right out right off the bat i mean i still got friends that you know when i graduated that are fighting that fight at one-on-one -on -one zoom classes right now you know it's exactly. it's it's so brutal it's so so brutal like yeah. it's an impossible game and it's it's such a catch-22 it's like you can't get auditions without an agent or yeah. a manager, and then you can't get a manager or an agent without any credits it's yeah it's um, Nobody gives a fuck until everybody gives a fuck, and then you don't need anyone to give a fuck. Completely. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, so yeah, when I first got out, I was going up for a lot of like teenage, like girl, cute girls, girl like, like well, yeah. I realized I really, really gravitated towards the like edgy, gritty, like juicy. Of course, everyone wants those roles, um, but I really, I was like, that was my sweet spot. Like that's where I felt comfortable. That's what I wanted. Um, and I just, yeah, it was mostly like the cheerleader, pretty girl. Which, yeah, CW you know, kind of Riverdale oh, shit. Yeah. And I also was interning 
at the CW and casting my first pilot season. So I was like in it. Wow. Did they help you at all? Um, I think I auditioned for like one thing there at like the end of my my internship, but they yeah. were so great. Um, they let me go whenever I needed when I whenever I had an audition. Um, yeah, they were awesome. And they were they let me be the reader in the room. Oh, so that's such a critical experience. Oh my God. Like yeah. I highly encourage any actor that is like just getting out of school to get an internship in casting. Like being in the room, you learn so much. It's everything. It really is. Marcy Phillips, I go, all right, when all this was going, not going on, I was going for her all the time as a reader. And it's just yeah. like, you know, it's, it's crazy. You know what I mean? Like you just forget what, as an actor, you know, your mind is so much like, I got to get it. I got to get it. I just had this long talk with this actor, David Costable about this. And yeah. it makes it, it, it I, I think being a reader or even just like being able to just sit in on an audition changes everything for an actor. Completely. It's like invaluable information. Um, my biggest lesson that I learned from that was the casting director is on your team. You're both on the same team. Yeah. Like, nobody is rooting against you. They want you to do good because they want to cast this role. Like They want to be done for the day. <laughs> yeah. They want you to be good. They want you to be it. Like, and something else I learned is like, they don't call people in if they don't think that they are like right for it. Like they're not yeah. gonna waste this time. And yeah, I just highly, highly recommend. So what was, uh, what was your first co-star guest star? The first thing I booked was this show on Lifetime. I don't even know if it's still happening. It's called, I Love You But I Lied. Okay, nice. I've been in for a few Lifetime things. Lifetime's yeah. the only network that's called me in for a dad and a son. So yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I love that. How do you do that? I like swear it was in the same week too. I was like, I had to grow my beard out, and then I looked like a 12 year old with a beard, and yeah. then I just shaved it off. <laughs> You're like, no, I don't know where I am. But, but hey, bless Lifetime. They give us like I think Meghan Markle got her start on Lifetime. A lot of good people got their start. You're great. Um, so I did like a really small little thing. I, it, I love you, but I lied. It's like a, every episode was like a different situation. Yeah. Like a different story. Like Black Mirror, sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then shortly after that, I. And that's just so the audience. Lifetime is non-union, right? I it actually was my first. I think it was SAG. Oh, nice! That that got you in the that got you in the in, what's it called the union? Yeah, I think I well, I think it was I became like a it was like my first waiver. Wow! So four SAG waivers, right? Or three, four or three? Yeah, four. something like that. Yeah. You can do like three SAG. It's three. You can do three SAG projects until you. You're a must join. You're a must join. So I did that, and then I did a really small like little uh, little role on this movie called it was called shotgun but now it's called after everything and i'm pretty sure they cut me out of it but <laughs> has it come know. out or it's come out yeah i'm pretty sure i'm not in it um and then that was sag and then i think i did oh i did a walmart commercial nice SAG. was that union that was union yep yeah because they they really kind of screwed actors on commercials now they're all going non-union yeah yeah it's kind of a bummer so if you don't mind for the audience, like what was the buffer period between that January pilot yeah. season to booking your yeah. lifetime? Yeah, so I had, Jan so January started pilot season. I didn't, I booked the lifetime little role in April. Oh, so you, only a few months. Yeah, which was amazing. Yeah. And then I think it took me like two years to book the the little role in after everything yeah i'm pretty sure it either took me like a year and a half or two years and i went through a really really like tough period where i was completely down on myself I, yeah uh, and it's so funny because like i'm sure a lot of actors can relate to this like i thought i was gonna graduate and like book a series regular and like that yeah. was that was gonna be it like having some miles teller and cammy mendez and that's it <laughs> Yeah. We're in the same year and we went to Stone Street together. Like I was working at the CW when she booked Riverdale. Oh, so, were you? No way. Oh, this is just how it works. Like this is this is what it's like. 
Um, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> lotto, lotto winners. <laughs> like, I'm so happy for Cammy. Um, yeah. But it was not like that for me. Uh, and it took me. Or anyone. It's not like that for yeah. anyone, you know? One in the million. And yeah. she told me the best. But, like, it was tough. And I, it was, it was really rough. And it's so funny because they, it's so true when people say, like, when you walk into the room, they feel, like, the desperation. Yeah. Like, I was so desperate to just book anything. Anything. I and know it was. Yeah. feeling on me, and I couldn't get rid of it. Yeah. Talk um, to me, because uh, we'll, we'll get into this later about your character, but I'm, I'm a drug addict and alcoholic coming up on four years. So I, I kind of fucked my Stone Street time up. I didn't take it that seriously. And the yeah. meetings I did get, I totally – that's my fault, you know, but whatever. You, you, you become bigger and stronger. But I think one of the mistakes that I didn't make, A, was obviously not taking it seriously, but B, was like they kind of try to help you get a reel together. Sometimes their footage is, is, is great, and sometimes it's like, ugh. So that January, were you able to come out of Stone Street with a reel, even not having had that lifetime gig yet, or did you not have one? I did not have a reel, like, at all. Um, I did that project with Ashlyn Halfnight, and I definitely had, like, some I, – I didn't have the footage, but I knew there was footage that was usable. But I didn't have it yet, and that was frustrating. But I will say, I didn't know how it looked. So yeah. I was I, – I, it was, you know – um, when people would ask for a reel, me and Michal would kind of go through my self tapes and find a self tape that like fit the character that I was, was auditioning for. And that it, it, it's, it's one way to do it. Um, I did it for a while, like use Ted's tapes and put those as my AA clips. And I got very few auditions than I did when I got a real reel, but it's better than nothing, you know, it's better than nothing for sure. Um, but yeah, I will say like, having fast forwarding like a bunch of years like I still don't have a solid reel that I'm like super proud of but now with Hightown I'm like let's oh you got go. it let's go yeah first time where I'm like okay I'm, I'm really proud of like this this work that I've done um so talk to me in, in that two years a like what did you do for survival and b how did you buoy yourself even yeah. having rep like I know like I think the thing is actors, like, you know, like for so long, we put the goalposts here. And what I mean by that is like, we go, if I can get an agent or a rep, I'll be okay. And then you get that. And then you go, if I could just be in that room auditioning for that casting director, I'll be okay. And then you get that. And then you go, if I could just book that series. And, and then it just keeps going up until you get to an Oscar and then you need seven more, you know? Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> Never, you know? Um. And that's a huge lesson I've learned is to like celebrate the little victories, especially like, uh, so in those two years, I probably, I don't think I had like even a single callback. Like it was, it was dry. Like I was not, I was not in a good place mentally. Um, were you, you stayed in New York or were you coming back? Cause I, I know you can commute by Boston. It's like a four hour, like, Oh, train. that's never mind. That's not as do as it's Providence that's like two hours right or yeah Providence is like yeah two okay so you were here were you waitressing were you what were you doing so, so I was working at a, a fitness studio called Pure Bar which what is, is that? like it's bar do you know what, what bar is I like the Pilates bars or yeah, yeah. oh okay it's Pilates yoga uh, ballet kind of like all morphed into one it's like all low impact movements um it's really great for your joints <laughs> it's all about toning and lengthening amazing so I was working behind the desk there and then I started teaching um so that's what I was doing to survive was, for for the viewers was is fitness always like a part of your life honestly no <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think I just sent you a photo of me working out shirtless sorry about that I was like I was like this is probably not a great idea <laughs> I, in quarantine, have, like, not even thought about fitness. Yeah. I think that's because it is my – it's still my survival job. I mean, I've been laid off right now, but, like, I, I've been a teacher since – or I've been working at Pure Bar for, like, four years. So it 
that was my survival job. And I started taking pure bar classes and that's what led me to the job. Um, cause I was like, Oh, this is fun. I like this. I might as well work behind the desk and get free classes. Totally. So then I started teaching. Um, but yeah, those two years were really rough. And then it kind of just, when it rains, it pours. Um, and they all just kind of came all at once. I did a Walmart, like a, a commercial, but it was like only on like online. I forget what that's called. Like new, like new media. Like, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so it was like, it was like before Hulu or like a YouTube video. Um, and then I was a must join. Then I booked my first like network co-star, which was, uh, an episode of Blue Bloods. Um, just a couple lines. Yep. I had a scene with Donnie Wahlberg and it was do you great. remember the lines? Uh, it, I, do I remember the lines? It was like four lines. I like said my name. I'm, I'm Eva Gold. I was like sobbing, crying always the crying girl. Um, <laughs> and my boyfriend had just overdosed on painkillers. Wow. Yeah. Drugs is always a very big theme in all my, all my roles. That's amazing. What yeah. just, I asked because the co-star thing is so hard for actors. Cause it can be like, yes, more water. You know what I mean? And then you get in, you know, like your head about like, how do I, how do I sell this character? You know what I mean? Like, so what advice would you have for people going up for those kind of things? Totally. Um, I guess the best advice I've ever gotten for a co-star um, audition, I, for, I, don't, I don't remember who gave it to me, but the best advice that I've ever get, gotten is the co-star is there to help the series regular or the guest star along in their journey. Yeah. Really not about you. No. <laughs> Nobody um, cares what your zodiac symbol is. <laughs> like the less you make it about you and the more you just make a choice and have fun with that moment. Yeah. Like that's all that matters. Co-stars are so random. Like it's all luck. I like it's so it's it, it's color, luck. it's eye, it's it's it can be like I had Peter Scanavino from Law and Order on and he, you know, yeah. he's he's like one of the series regulars right. and he's like he told this amazing story. He's like, dude, I sit there because we need so many co-star guest stars and it is just so random why someone gets picked and doesn't, you know? It's no, just, it's, it's so yeah. And all I can say is like, the, the more you go on, like the better you'll get at it. And that's yeah. like, in general, I think. The more auditions you go on, the better you'll get at it, the more comfortable you'll be with it. Um, it's hard to like a lot of people when I was first starting out, like I'd go on an audition and like my parents would be like, when are you going to hear? And I'm like, I probably won't. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Never. <laughs> yeah. Like people don't understand that. Like acting is such a hard profession. Yeah. It's... We're just coming up against no's, no's or no response or no answer. Oh God. No then it's it's tough but yeah the more co-stars you can go on and the more practice you get I think that's really and the less it is you make it about you it'll totally come. and 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 I think a lot of casting agencies have started to become a little bit cooler about opening co-stars on actors access totally. so you know like it's really cool for the actors listening you know if you do a good job of like specifying your profile you can find like pretty good projects that are just one or two lines without an agent. And that's a good way to go at them with the ammo. So then once you got that blue bloods, did you sign with an agency? Yes. So, uh, I did blue bloods, which was bowling Misha, which yeah. we will talk to later. Cause they also did high town. Oh, right. Of course. And like, they are just the best. And if you can make a good impression in one room, like that's yeah. you have one fan somewhere. That's all that matters. Yeah, they've been good to me too. They're great. But they didn't bring me in for Hightown. I told Badge that. <laughs> oh, don't worry, there's season two coming. So mm. well, Hopefully. Who knows when that'll be able to film though. Uh, so yeah, so I signed with Innovative uh, pretty soon. Oh, you went with a big one. Yeah, so Michal actually brought me to Innovative and the majority of Michal's clients were with Innovative at the time. Um, and I signed with Innovative and I felt... I, I felt very uh, out of place, to be completely honest. Yeah. Like, 
He was like, I have eight, like two credits, you know, like <laughs> I'm like a little, I don't know. I'm like new. I, yeah. I, very green. Um, and I felt like very scared to talk to my agents, which is, you should never be scared to talk to your agents. Never. Yeah, of course. Never be scared to talk to your representation. Like you work together, you're a team. Um, but I was like really intimidated and I was with them for two years. And, uh, then my agent left innovative and I felt kind of like lost. Yeah. And I was kind of thrown around for with a couple different agents and nothing really stuck. Um, and I'm really grateful for innovative and the people I met there. Um, but it just wasn't right at the time. Um, so then right before in 2019, 2019, literally last year, um, I had just, I was in callbacks for high town and I was paying for a new pilot called half empty, which was Cassie David's, um, pilot for okay. him. And I had had not heard back. I was like pinned and I was in callbacks for high town and I just made the decision to switch agencies. Nice. Where'd you go? I went to Buckwald. Okay. So meeting with Cassandra Tay, who is now my agent, who I absolutely adore. And I don't feel nervous to talk to anyone there. Like I totally. feel, and I think my experience at Innovative taught me so much that I was like, I just need an agent that like, I feel like I can actually communicate with. I'm not like scared of, I'm not intimidated. Um, and me and Cassandra like hit it off immediately. Like she's so cool. She's so nice. Um, and literally a few days later, I think I signed with Buckwald and then two days later I booked <laughs> high town and then that night booked half empty. So no I, way. So what do you have to do? Oh my God. I was like on a high. So I was like, this is the best. So this is what I mean when I say like celebrate the, the victories. Yeah. I, couldn't have asked for anything. Everything was going right at the time. Um, so both were recurring. So it was great because it was Oh, you were able to do both. Not it didn't conflict. One day conflicted and then I think half empty might have moved it or high town moved it. Somebody moved it and I got to do both. Amazing. And I was, this is a dream. Um and because I was still with innovative before that i i had to pay innovative oh yeah i know how that can be because they helped me out for two years and like i'm like you deserve it like yeah you, you believed in me yeah you got me to where i am now like you compl i had no problem doing that um and thank god for cassandra who like took over like way down the line when the show started coming out and we were gonna go to south by southwest and then everything kind of like went from there she had no part in like any of the audition process but she completely took over as my agent and like was the best that's amazing yeah because originally hightown was going to do the premiere there right yeah so they were going to premiere the first episode at south by southwest which was wild like, i know i was supposed to go there i think badge and i were going to do it there and i had a few others and i was so bummed you know yeah i would have loved to go i mean i wasn't i they were going to do a panel and i wasn't going to be on the panel or anything um but I was thinking about just like flying down and going because yeah. I also haven't seen any of it. Yeah, it, it's so funny because I got sent the thing and he was like, he was like, how the fuck did you get sent it? And like, Kiss Me Hall texted me that you texted her and I was like, can he send me them? Like, I haven't seen it. <laughs> it, um, it, it dude, it, I had to go through like seven different mainframes just to get into whatever to watch it. It was like, my social and like there was watermarks and there was more and I was like all right you know so I blew through it but you were amazing in that show Thank and you. I and and coming back to that's why I brought up the attic thing earlier you know yeah. it's uh uh you, you you play a girl that witnesses we we can spoil it right at this point at this point who, who witnesses a murder and then you have to go on the run and uh you were I can't remember. Were you already using at this point or? Were you I had just gotten out of treatment. Got it. So, yeah. So the show opens on me and Sherry Henry and we're in her car and she offers me a fentanyl lollipop. And I say, I just got out of treatment. Yeah. Um, and then later you find out that I'm, I've been clean for like over a month, 42 days, 47 days. And then some shit really goes down and spoiler she relapses yeah, yeah and it's 
it was, I'll go back. So when I read the script, I, I was like, I have, I have to be a part of this project. Like it was so special to me. Not only was it like set on the Cape where I've grown up going every summer my entire life. You guys filmed it there? We were there for 10 days. Yeah. But the interiors were here. Interiors were here. Some exteriors, like the motel room, my motel room and all that is, was in Long Island. Okay. Um, Yeah. But it definitely looks like the Cape. Oh, for sure. Um, But a lot of the exteriors, the stuff that had to be like in P-Town, like on Commercial Street was all filmed in P-Town. Got it. The majority was filmed in Long Island. Uh, So I read the script and I was like, I have to be a part of this project. And my cousin passed away from a heroin addiction in 2016. So it was like this project, I was like, I, this is like the dream. And my audition sides were the, the scene in the AA meeting. Wow. And I was like, this is, I like, A, it's like cathartic. B, like, I, I got to do a Boston accent, which was so fun. Amazing. Like, my family is like, no R's, pack the can, have it, yeah. Like, yeah. it is, all have got it. Um, and, yeah, I got to, like, honor my cousin, which was, that's amazing. Because I could tell you were really pulling from something there, you know, that's, I'm yeah. sorry for your loss, but, you know, that's, uh, I'm glad you were able to play tribute to it, you know, and, and mourn it in a cathartic way. How was filming and how was that experience? Yeah, it was, it was crazy. I mean, me and my cousin were super close when we were little and then kind of like lost touch. And then he obviously like kind of went off the deep end and wasn't even like really there, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So for me, it was amazing to film because I felt so much more connected to my cousin than I had in like years. Yeah. Um, And I got to like really put myself like in his mindset, um, which was troubling, but like um, amazing. Like I, I never would have gotten that opportunity had I not worked on this, on the project. Um, and it, you said, you know, it came back from Bowling Misha, right? Were they the ones that called you in for that? They, yeah. Josie at Bowling Misha is just like, she's the best. Yeah. Um, and I, it's crazy. Like I, I went to the audition and I walked out and I kind of, you just, sometimes you just like feel it. Like you're just yeah. like, really well. like, yeah. Yeah. And so I texted me Hall actually. And I was like, that, that one went really well. Like I'm not going to say anything, but like it went really well. And then that night they asked for a reel and then I was pinned. And then they were like, we might have callbacks. Um, and then they did have callbacks and I got to meet Rachel Morrison in the room, which was wild. Amazing. Because I'm like, oh, okay, hi, um, Oscar nominated cinematographer Rachel Morrison. Hello. I love that. That's yeah. amazing. It's crazy. And Rachel and Rebecca, who's the creator, Rebecca Cutter, both grew up in Massachusetts. Got so it. Immediately, like that connection. Anyone who's grown up in Massachusetts knows, like. Oh, so they, you guys had that rapport. Like you just get it. It's a different kind of connection. That's um, amazing. And then I think Kim was in the room and she walked me out of, out of the callback and she was like, are you from Massachusetts? And I was like, yeah. She was like, I, that was really uh, genuine. Like that, your accent's really genuine. That whole thing was very- Oh, she thought you were faking it just to get it or something? <laughs> <laughs> I really am. That's amazing. Yeah, you can totally tell. That's so great. And how's it been? You know, I know we're, we're stuck in a little bit of a pandemic a little bit but how's it been watching it air you know has that been fun so yeah so I definitely did not expect to be home film like watching it um or did you leave New York because of the pandemic to go home okay in New York I was I left New York on March 15th so I've been home for three months are you gonna come back eventually oh yeah yeah yeah. I'm like dying to come back yeah but I mean here there's a lot more room like I can go outside yeah I'm in Williamsburg right now. There's not much to do. Right. There's not yeah. much. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything, which is nice. But yeah. um, but it's also been really special because I get to watch it with my family. And, and friends, I'm sure, are watching it. And like, oh, you my, know. 
friends are watching it, which is awesome. And I thought I was going to be watching it like physically with my friends um, because we were all going to be in New York. And now I'm physically watching it with my family who we all shared the same experience of like losing my cousin. Yeah. That is like, it. it's so special. It's so, so special. Um, and yeah, it actually kind of worked out. That's so beautiful. Yeah. That's amazing. Chris Levins, that's, that's that's so beautiful. Do you do you know what's next for you? Do you have any idea? Oh, no. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> this pandemic, I'm telling you, like I I I'm glad I'm so lucky. Like everyone I know is healthy and safe. Yeah. Um, I'm ready to get back to work. I'm ready to get back to doing stuff. I'm I'm shocked, but I miss auditioning. Like I miss going in and getting feedback. I know. Not hearing anything. Like, I, I genuinely miss auditioning. Me too. But. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's keeping you inspired right now? Like, what are you watching other than iTown? Yeah. Uh, right now I'm watching Elite. Have you watched Elite? on? I have not. It's a Spanish TV show. It is so good. It is like everything I want a teen drama to be, like, elevated. It's wow. fantastic. Um, but it's in Spanish. It's in Spanish. So I'm watching with subtitles. Um, it's amazing. The acting is incredible. Uh, Have you done normal great. people yet? So I li- that is literally my next one. I saw your interview with the two of them, and I was like, I read the book, and it's like one of my favorite books. And I'm oh, just yeah. Like, I'm to get the relief so then I can get to normal people. Oh, Paul and Daisy are my homies. They're the best. you got to watch it. I, I, that one... That one really kind of shook me. Absolutely incredible things. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll you got to let me know real time feedback. Watch it because it, that's happening. I'm like almost done with Elite, so it's very soon. Amazing. And then, what advice would you have for actors? You know, that are maybe about to graduate or did graduate, and you know, are kind of lost. Like any advice? Yeah. You know, from those two years of just kind of, you know, yeah. waiting for that yes. Um, I'd say get yourself in class, like find a coach, find someone who you really click with and just get yourself working, keep working that muscle. Like you can always get better. Things can always, you know, be tweaked or you can work on like comedy. If you don't feel strong with comedy, get yourself in class. Um, I highly recommend Bob Krakauer. He is incredible. Ted Slaberski, like they are such great resources use those resources that like you can find um keep yourself acting like uh, it's it's hard but like do not get down on yourself it yeah up, it happens um it will it will happen yeah and it, it auditioning is like a whole other kind of monster like than being on set completely different ball games like auditioning is like a game like you like totally. it's it's a completely different situation than you being on set. So did it did it feel very relaxing filming that? Like, you know, yeah. versus being in the room? I literally saw a tweet recently that was like, auditioning is the job. Yeah, like, and the gig is the vacation. Vacation, and I'm yeah. like, that is so beyond true. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Well, what's the best way for people to stay in touch with you and what you're up to? Yes, yeah, so you can follow me on Instagram at crystal evans um crystal with a c right the c i'm like krista with a k yeah Um, and then krista collins rest in peace (laughs) we loved you yeah so yeah crystal with a c crystal evans and then you can follow me on twitter if you want which is crystal evans but two s's amazing the first one so well crystal evans thank you so much for coming on thank you so much for having me ryan to be continued and let's get a project going yes would love that Amazing.